If you love For The Girls podcast, then you'd love working with me directly even more. I'm a confidence coach with a super fun membership, The Confidence Club, where you get daily coaching with me personally via group chat, and I host a live group call every month. If you want high value coaching at a low ticket price, this is for you. The Confidence Club is for the girls who want to grow at their own pace, take the pressure off of a private setting and weekly call commitments, learn alongside a supportive community of like-minded besties, and gain an unlimited amount of insight and mentorship at an affordable rate. No matter how busy your schedule is with work, school, or kids, this program is a game changer and was designed with you in mind. And for those of you who want to accelerate your personal development journey with private coaching, I offer three or six month one-on-one coaching programs for the girls who are ready to go all in. For all the details on coaching with me, head to victoriaalario.com or click the link in the show notes. Color clashing is in, crochets are trending, and Y2K fashion is back in for who knows what reason. But your favorite drinks never go out of style with Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. Drizzly has you covered with the largest selection of beer, wine, and spirits delivered in under 60 minutes. They won't judge you for drinking last season's cocktails or mocktails if you prefer non-alcoholic drinks like me. And maybe you can't be talked out of participating in the 2000s revival, but at least they can get you out of wearing those jelly platforms to the corner store. With Drizzly, it's easier than ever to find a timeless classic or shake it up with something fresh. Need something special to impress the trendsetter who has it all? Give the gift of drinks with Drizzly because you can't buy wine in the wrong size. It's a no-brainer. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Settling is not an option for Everything me. I desire is already mine. What if you can have it all? <laughs> because every day is for the girls. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of For the Girls. I'm your host, Victoria Alario. And today we're talking about dating tips for when you want a relationship. But instead of giving you my point of view, we're talking about it from my boyfriend's point of view. I thought I should change it up, try something fun. It was quite funny for me at least, but You know, I'm always posting, asking listeners and followers what they want me to talk about or what they could really use advice on. I'm always looking for some feedback on topics that I know you girls will actually want to hear and listen to. And one that has been reoccurring over the past few months are just dating tips and advice for when you really want to get into a relationship, how to get from single to being in a relationship. And I think that's been coming up more and more and more because a lot of you girls have seen now that that's, you know, my experience that happened to me. So now that they see I have a boyfriend, they're like, what did you do? What could I do? Help me. Like they're overthinking everything. I'm getting constant messages from girls. Like, does he like me if I haven't heard from him in two days, but he planned a nice date? All of these things now trying to figure out like if the guy that they're seeing or going out with is the one and so on and so forth. So the other day I was thinking, you know, I'm a girl with my own perspective and opinions on like, well, this is what I did or this is what I would do. This is what I think works. But I'm not a man seeking a woman as a partner. I'm a girl seeking a man as a partner. So I feel like something that could really help girls is hearing more from a man who can say this is what guys tend to look for this is what turns guys on this is what turns guys off speaking from his own experience now of course it comes with the disclaimer that he doesn't speak for everybody he is merely speaking for himself he made that very clear he's like make sure that they know that every guy can be different like he doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings and be like well no this is how it is this is what guys like because of course every guy has a different mindset and a different upbringing and different values and morals. But I at least thought this could be helpful for girls to just get a little bit inside of the male brain when it comes to dating on what at least this type of guy 
likes and whatnot. That does not mean that he is up for The Bachelor, okay? I'm not sharing. This is a one woman man. Okay, girls, I am not sharing him. I am just sharing his brain. I thought I could help a few of y'all out by lending the male brain for some dating perspectives. <laughs> so I put up a Q&A on my story the other day asking for you girls to ask me questions to ask him. Wow, that was like a tongue twister, but you know what I'm saying. So I had tons of questions. A lot of them were very like specific situations that people needed advice on. So I just kind of stuck to the general questions that I think can help everybody. And like I said, it was so funny going through them because we were kind of reliving our early dating stage. Like we were really reliv reliving our first date, second, third date. So thank you for actually allowing us the time to do that. But yeah, I think that these questions might really help a bunch of you single girls out. So I asked him everything last night, wrote down all of his answers, and I'm going to share them all with you. So let's get right into it, shall we? Now, I simply wouldn't be me if I didn't kick this off by asking him a question about me specifically. I asked him, what did you like about me on the first date? Of course, I want to know the answer to that, but... Another reason why I asked him was just because maybe it could help somebody to know what kind of personality traits guys might like. Again, of course, this guy in particular, he doesn't speak for all, but I figured, let's see, because everyone is a little bit different in the way that they are, so I guess what kind of worked for you? So what did you like about me on the first date? He said, I was talkative, I was sweet, Ah, thank you, but... One thing that was really important was that I was very like down to earth and not stuck up. And you will see that this is a trending answer that he gives in other questions. So I think somebody stuck up may have triggered him or traumatized him at some point in his dating experience <laughs> because he makes it very clear to not be stuck up. He makes it very clear to not be full of yourself. So <laughs> make sure you're not doing that. Um, he said that our conversation was very back and forth and that I was talkative and I talked a lot, but it made him feel comfortable, not in the sense that like I overshared. I asked him like, was I a big oversharer? Because I tend to overshare, I feel. And he said, no, he said he wanted to know more about me after it was like the good amount of talkative that I was like clearly confident. I wasn't like quiet or holding back. We just had a lot of like back and forth flowing conversation. And I do think from my own perspective that that talkative kind of energy does exude confidence in a way. It just kind of shows that like you're not afraid of putting yourself out there. You know, like you can be an open book, but of course to an extent. Like like I said, I wasn't necessarily oversharing according to him. Personally, I remember back then I always felt like I was oversharing. I always would think like, oh my God, I say so much. Like I didn't need to say all that. But according to him... It, it wasn't like that. So I guess that was just me overthinking in my own head because I really liked him and I didn't want to like ruin anything. But I do think that it just goes to show that you get to be like really yourself and you're not afraid of like saying or doing the wrong thing. You could just kind of put it all out there. And I think that it also really does bring for guys a sense of, or just people in general, I think it brings a sense of comfort. Like you feel... Like you can talk to this person. You feel like you can open up with this person and they're kind of matching that energy. Like you're able to really both like confide in each other and not feel judgment or not feel like this person isn't easy to talk to, you know? So I think that that was kind of a big thing was that I really, I, I don't know. I just think I'm generally a person who's easy to talk to. So I think he kind of felt that from the first date. And so that question led to me asking, what made you want to see me again? Like what scored really a second date, a third date and continuing? And he said the compatibility was the biggest thing, which I have talked about compatibility so much like on, you know, in my podcast, on multiple episodes. I've had tons of TikTok videos about it. I've actually gone viral in the past talking about how for me, compatibility was always so much more important than chemistry I think chemistry is easy to find if people are attracted to each other you could have chemistry even on a platonic you know vibe there could just be that chemistry between you two because you get along so well but 
aside from chemistry, I think the compatibility is really the most important. So that's what he said. He said the vibes were there and the compatibility was important. He said we were both on the same page. We had a lot of things in common and shared the same values, morals, and upbringing. So while everyone is different, I do think that that just goes to say that men are also looking for compatibility. And a lot of girls go into dating just wanting to be liked. But I always say, make sure that you like them before you're stressing if they like you. And I've I've had this conversation with clients so many times where girls will go on one date with someone or they'll just start talking to someone and they get really hyper fixated on being someone that person likes. And I get it. I've been there with it. Like I just said, with him in the beginning, of course, there were times where I was overthinking, like, did I overshare and whatnot? But that was more of like those giddy feelings, I think, in the beginning. I've had a lot of clients that get really insecure and really in their own head, like worked up, just nervous about constantly ruining it and constantly thinking like, I need to make sure that I am who this person likes. Like they fear rejection. They really don't want that person to decide that they don't like them. Whereas I think If you go into dating with compatibility as your driving force because you're like, I'm looking for a serious relationship. I'm not just looking to like somebody. I'm looking for a real thing. Then if you can go into it with that compatibility at the forefront, you're not going to be so worked up on being perfect for them. You're going to be focused on you guys being the right match for each other. So you'll go into dating in a different way because you're not going to get so worked up about you being liked. It's more about like, Are we aligned? You know, do we have that compatibility? And then even if you may have kind of liked somebody, say you went out with someone and he was cute and there was chemistry and there were some good vibes, but you guys weren't really compatible. If that's your priority and you have that maturity around dating, then you're not going to go home freaking out. You're going to be more like, you know what? We weren't really compatible. I'm not 100% sure that this is what I'm looking for in a relationship. He was cute. He was nice. And I liked him. But I just don't really think I could see myself long term with this person because we really didn't have too much in common. So I I loved that he said that about the compatibility because we really never had this type of conversation before. So it just goes to show that, like he said, we were on the same page and we really were because we were both prioritizing and looking for compatibility. Now there was something else that he mentioned as far as guys wanting to see girls again you know on the second third date and so on and so forth so now remember we're talking about people looking for a relationship not people looking for just a hookup so there's two parts to what he said here that I'm going to share so he also thought that being flirty and affectionate was very important so girls get your flirt on don't be shy okay I know a lot of girls really struggle with flirting so I do have an episode out I think it's called like feminine energy tips flirting and whatnot and because I always thought flirting was important too but you know he really said that even from the first date having that kind of like affectionate vibe that flirty vibe that was very important to get just give someone those romantic feelings to get someone kind of like excited in that way of like okay I could actually kind of see that spark here so with that being said he did say that the guy should make the first move he did make the first move let's let's put that on the record so he did make the first move but he said that the vibes were right he was like I would never have gone for it. I would never have gone for a kiss or making any sort of first move if he didn't feel like he got the right signal. So the vibe had to really be there and I had to be matching that like flirty energy in order for him to feel comfortable making that move. But this is the second part. This is the disclaimer. He said like, there are guys, he called them pigs and animals. He was like, there's guys who are pigs. These guys, there's guys who are animals too. So like, even if those guys aren't looking for anything serious and they just want to hook up, they're going to probably go for that first move regardless. Like they're going to probably go for a kiss, even if the connection isn't there. So it's just really important that you identify like what you're dating for, what your intentions are, because He just thinks generally that guys are more likely to make the first move. But if they're looking for something serious, they're going to wait for the right 
spark they're gonna wait for the right vibe they're gonna make sure that it wouldn't be weird like they're gonna read the the signals first whereas on the other end there could be guys who really don't even care about those certain vibes they're simply just looking to get laid so of course they're gonna go in for the kiss and speaking of the hooking up and going for the first kiss or making that first move and whatnot I asked him about the bucket theory, which, by the way, I had to explain to him three times, okay? This man is not on TikTok. He has never heard of this bucket theory. And maybe some of you girls have not as well, but I've seen it a million times, so I will break it down for you all. So the bucket theory is that men know immediately if a girl that, that they went out with or that they met is a girl that they would put in the girlfriend bucket or in a hookup bucket, or in the like, no, I basically want nothing to do with her kind of bucket. So if a guy goes on a date with someone that the theory is that he'll know off the bat, like I could see this girl being my girlfriend, or yeah, I'm attracted to her, there's definitely a physical connection, but I would never take her seriously, I would just hook up with her, or the other one is like, there's none of the above, we have nothing there. So after, like I said, three times of re-explaining the buckets to him, he said ultimately he thinks that it's true. He said everyone has their checklist, so you could probably know immediately right off the bat because you kind of have this checklist that you're looking for. So based on how they match that checklist, say that someone's like an 8 out of 10, off the bat, you could be like, wow, I could really see myself with this person. You know, I could really see myself taking this person seriously they have these qualities that I'm looking for I don't want to ruin it with someone like this whereas on the other end you know someone could be drop dead gorgeous absolutely beautiful but if the connection isn't there and they're not really like like I mentioned the compatibility like you're not really compatible and you're just not interested in that way like you wouldn't take it seriously yeah you could probably still go out with that girl and hang out with that girl just to hook up and he's like, I, I've done this myself. Plenty of guys have done this that I know of where like, yeah, they they know it's not going to be anything serious. But if they're single and just looking to mingle, then they don't really see the harm in just like going out or having fun and hooking up and whatnot. Because there's really, that's just it. There's that physical att- attraction or connection, but there's absolutely nothing deeper. And then otherwise, if there's just no romantic connection at all, then they'll, they know off the bat. Like, I'll just never see this girl again. I'm not even going to hit her up to hook up with her. I'm not going to be with her. That's just it. And, and you could know from the jump that that's that. So with that being said, if you're in the girlfriend bucket, it's not really going to be a big deal how soon you sleep together or how soon you hook up because he's already got you in the girlfriend bucket. Like if he's already into you in that way, he already sees you as someone that he wants to make his girlfriend. There is really no timeline or there's no like, oh, it was too soon or she gave it up quickly or whatever it may be. But if he's not really sure about the connection between you or if his first instinct is to put you in that hookup bucket and then you do sleep together early on, there's probably no coming out of that bucket. That's when things become like a situation ship, whatever everyone calls them, or friends with benefits. Like if you were not already in the girlfriend bucket and then you hook up early on, that's probably where that's going to go. Like there's probably no progressing it and evolving it into a more serious relationship. Again, that's own that's his own like opinion, that's his perspective, but that's also kind of what aligns with the theory from what I've seen. Like he kind of put that out there as well of like, well, yeah, you know, if I'm if I was really into you, like it, it wouldn't matter to me because obviously I'm into you and, and I would want to do that with you, but if you're someone that, you know, I'm not really taking seriously, then yeah, like just going for it right away would just solidify that like that's all it's going to be and so when I've seen that in the video is that's what that's what they say I think that it's Tinks who has really said it the most that I've seen I don't know if she like created it or if she takes the credit for it but I've seen her talk about it and she said that's why like there's really no right timeline there's really no right amount of time that you should wait to sleep with a guy because it really just depends on what bucket that they put you in 
And then, like, that's it. So everyone is going to be different. You could either sleep with someone too soon or you could not. And, like, it ultimately, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just really what's based on that specific connection or relationship. Now let's talk about texting. Who should text who first? The question was specifically who should text who following the date. So now he he hates games. He especially hates texting games. He really thinks that it's quite silly of like, no, I'm going to wait for this one to text first or vice versa, whatever. So he did say he was like, technically the guy should text the girl first and he probably will text the girl first. But it's nice for a girl to text the guy to make him know that she's thinking of him. So he really doesn't see anything wrong with a girl texting a guy first, but he thinks, yeah, if a guy likes a girl, then he'll text her for sure after the date. Like, you know, who who should, okay, say that you go out, you have a nice time, and then you don't hear from him that night or the next day. He's like, yeah, the guy should, but it's really not a bad thing if the girl does. And so then it just turned to a conversation more in general. He said that a girl could text a guy first if she wants to. Like if if he's on her mind, but he hasn't texted her, she should text him and let him know that he is on her mind because that's the mature thing to do. That's like, like he said, like he doesn't like the games. Like if you're thinking about someone don't hold back go go ahead text them so it's not going to turn a guy off that she texts him first obviously unless you're like if you're annoying about it and you're doing it a million times and you're blowing up his phone then that's annoying for anybody but if you're just once in a blue moon texting him first it's really not a big deal with that being said i personally think knowing how men are If he likes you, he's not going to make you wait to hear from him. He's going to go for what he wants. I just think that as, as a species, men don't wait for women. So it's not that he's wrong in what he's saying of like, yeah, of course, text first. I, I don't, I'm not one for playing games either, but I do think that knowing how men operate, he's not gonna put himself in a position to lose a girl just by not texting her. Like, if if a man really likes a girl, he's gonna want to call her. He's gonna want to text her. And I don't think he's going to require her to reach out first. I don't think that a man who likes a girl will put her in that position to have to text him first. I really don't think that men would wait around to hear from a girl. And in my case, I mean, he didn't do that. Like, he didn't, he never waited around to hear from me. So I... I think it's true. I just also think that he wouldn't have minded if I texted him first every now and then. There was even a girl who wrote in saying, I hang out with this guy every now and then and he makes the plans, but he doesn't really text me in between. So say maybe once a week or every other week, he reaches out to make plans with her, but there's no consistent conversation in between. He's not texting her to see how her day is going. There's no regular conversation. The only conversation is like specifically to make plans and we were talking about it and he thinks it could go either way like he doesn't think off the bat it means that he doesn't like her at all obviously it doesn't have to mean that but what it is it, it's likely that he's not looking for anything serious because otherwise he'd be texting her wanting to talk to her and wanting to progress things with her so I think that was kind of the conclusion that he and I came to is like he's probably just hanging out with her when he feels like it because if he really likes you and is looking for a serious relationship he's not gonna go days without talking to her and just once a week or every other week randomly hit her up and be like hey want to grab dinner it that's probably the behavior of somebody who maybe likes you sure but just doesn't really know what he wants right now or maybe he's seeing multiple people or maybe he likes you but not enough to commit like it could just be one of those situations I don't really think that it's true of like oh I'm so busy I'm just really bad with my phone like everyone's busy but I I really think that that changes when you're serious about someone I think if you like someone and you want to get into a relationship with them instantly you're not going to be bad with your phone you will text them at least once a day maybe not all day maybe not full-blown conversations but at least just to say how was your day or have a good day i recently discovered honey love and i am so grateful i did because there is nothing worse than suffering from uncomfortable shapewear honey love has revolutionized the bra and shapewear game 
So say goodbye to bra underwire that digs into your body all day. Their bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift. Plus, they're made with fabric that's so soft, you won't be counting down the minutes until you can take it off. And their shapewear uses targeted compression technology, so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating when trying to look snatched. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. Plus, for this month only, Honey Love is giving up to 50% off site-wide. Visit honeylove.com forward slash for the girls to shop their November sale and please support For The Girls by letting them know I sent you when the survey asks. I am not kidding when I tell you girls that comfort is the best gift you can give yourself. A few months ago, before I discovered Honey Love, I went to a wedding and I specifically bought shapewear to wear under my dress, and I actually ended up taking it off before I even got there. I couldn't even sit in the car wearing it because it was so uncomfortable, I knew it would ruin my night. But it totally killed my confidence. Now, I have another wedding coming up that I am so excited for because I got to try on my dress with my new Honey Love Superpower thong, and my confidence was instantly boosted back up again. The Superpower collection has shorts, briefs, or thongs, that distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas you need less compression. Their signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. And the best part is it won't ever roll up or down thanks to the flexible boning hidden in the side seams. I cannot recommend it enough. So treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 50% off site-wide at honeylove.com forward slash for the girls this month only. Inventory is limited and the sale ends soon, so don't miss their best deals of the year. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support my show and tell them I sent you by putting for the girls. It's time to ditch the underwire for good. Thanks to Honey Love. I wasn't kidding when I said every day is for the girls because now you can work with me directly every day in the Confidence Club, my high value coaching membership at a low ticket rate. I'm offering daily coaching via group chat and a live group call every month for members of this supportive girl gang. The Confidence Club is for the girls who want to grow at their own pace, take the pressure off of a group setting and weekly call commitments, learn alongside a like-minded community, and gain an unlimited amount of insight and mentorship at an affordable rate. And no matter how busy your schedule is with work, school, or kids, this program is a game changer and was designed with you in mind. So come raise the bar with me and your new besties in the Confidence Club at victoriaalario.com. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earn In. Earn In is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earn In app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. To me, financial stability is extremely important. So that's why I'd use Earn In, because it empowers you to live life to the fullest. And now you can make Earn In a part of your financial routine and join Earn In's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earn In, I think about financial stability and security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. So download Earn In today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. And make sure when you download the Earn In app, you type in For The Girls under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. That's For The Girls under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, daily max and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earn In is a financial technology company not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. If you've been wanting to learn a new language for your travel abroad over the holidays without feeling like a tourist, then Rosetta Stone is for you. Rosetta Stone is the most trusted language learning program, offering 25 different languages and a lifetime membership. 
Imagine only having to pay once for language lessons and having as much time as you want to utilize them forever. The value can't be beat. Not only is it the best and most valuable language program, but the most convenient too. Lessons are as short as 10 minutes and can be done anytime and any place. So instead of aimlessly scrolling on social media, invest those 10 minutes a day more wisely to fast track your language skills. If you know you want to learn a language but feel overwhelmed or intimidated getting started, Rosetta Stone will help you create a routine and commit to your goals. So don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, For the Girls listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 40% off. That's $179 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 40% off at rosettastone.com forward slash today. Throughout my career, I always knew I wanted my own brand, but having an online store was something I never thought I'd be able to make happen. Yet now, I'm selling feminine clothing and lingerie, and it's so easy, all because I use Shopify. (coughs) Shopify is the global e-commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million dollars stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And you can sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. What I love about Shopify is that they give you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. From the graphic design aspect to making customer service super easy on my end, there's nothing you can't do. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash for the girls, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash for the girls now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash for the girls. So the texting question was very repetitive. I had a lot of people asking in all different ways about texting. So I hope that that whole thing, you know, helps you girls out. I hope that that answers everyone's questions. But another one that was very repetitive was about paying for dates and planning the dates and all that kind of stuff. A lot of girls inquiring about about that feminine and masculine dynamic so I had one girl in particular saying that she really values a traditional relationship where she's super embodied in her feminine and he is super strong in his masculine so her question was so does that mean that he always plans the date and he always pays so naturally he said yes he said I think the men really should be the one to plan the date and pay for the date but he said he doesn't think that it's bad if a girl offers even though a masculine man would more than likely say no because that's kind of that role it's not to say every man would say no but a man who's really embodied in his masculine energy of course they would say no they wouldn't take the money but you know, he just said, it it feels nice. It's not like a masculine man would want you to pay or would need you to pay, but he, he thinks that it's nice to offer. However, of course, here I come into play. Then I'm like, wait, 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 wait. So I explained to him why I disagree with that. I think women who want to be really embodied in their feminine should not necessarily offer to pay because it's more than likely a fake offer it's not genuine I think the only women who should be offering to pay or offering money or splitting the bill or whatever are the women who wouldn't mind if he accepted the women who really mean it 
the only women I think that should be even remotely reaching for their wallet and insinuating to split or whatever it might be are the women who would be perfectly okay with him accepting and would not think twice about it. I think if a girl would be turned off by a guy accepting, if a girl hopes that a guy would say no, then she should not be offering. That's point blank how I feel from the perspective of the question. If a girl wants to feel feminine and she doesn't want him to take her money, then why should she do the fake offering? It's not a genuine gesture and it's not going to make the girl feel good because it's not a true offer. So I really think people should only do what's true to them and what they genuinely want. So if a girl wants to set the tone where it's like, no, he's the masculine, he takes me on this date and he pays, I'm the feminine, so I just sit there and look pretty and say thank you, then that's, in my opinion, the way that it should go. And after I explained that, he agreed. He said, yeah, well, obviously that's true too. Like, if it's not a real gesture, then no, you shouldn't. It's just not necessarily a bad thing if you do because it's more than likely that he'll say no. But I'm all about sticking to what you actually want. I really think that especially those early stages, they set the tone for the future of your relationship. The only thing that I think a feminine woman should do when the bill comes is be kind and sweet and grateful and appreciative. Like, thank you so much. This was great. I would love to do this again or the food was really nice. I never came here, so I'm really glad that I got to try it out, check it out. Like, whatever it might be, I just don't think that the gesture has to be the fake reaching into the bag, the fake offering. I've never been fake and I don't do fake and if I specifically want that dynamic where it's like this is how it is I'm the woman in my feminine you're the man in his masculine then I'm not gonna be fake and make that offer because I don't want to put that onto myself or onto you I want it to just be clear cut and black and white this is my role this is your role that's the way that the cookie crumbles now of course that doesn't apply to everyone but that's how I feel if it's a woman who's really embodying in her feminine, just make sure that you look him right in the eyes and you say thank you. And you show that you're happy about being here and you show that true, genuine gratitude for him taking you on this lovely date. Spoiler alert, I never offered, especially not from like those early on dates either. And I asked him, but did you ever even think about that? Like, okay, you went out with me and from the jump, I didn't offer this with the bill. I just said thank you and whatnot. So did you ever think about that afterwards? Was that ever something you said to your friends? Oh, she didn't offer. Did you ever think twice about it? Like, oh, that's weird. She didn't offer to split. And he said no. So it just goes to show that you really don't have to make that offer if you want to feel embodied in those traditional roles of masculine and feminine because a masculine man probably won't even think about the fact afterwards. Just like he said. He's like, no, honestly, it never even dawned on me. I never thought about the fact that you didn't offer to split or anything like that. So it just goes to show what kind of guy you're dealing with. Now, maybe if you're dealing with a guy who prioritizes that and values that, then he might say, that's weird that she didn't offer to split. She just kind of assumed I was paying. But I don't know, it depends on what kind of guy it is that you're looking for. You could be looking for a guy who also automatically assumes that I asked you out, so I'm the one treating. And that is that on that. So now let's go back to the whole checklist thing because he mentioned that in the bucket theory question when he was saying, you know, based on your checklist and how, where they fall, how they meet your checklist, that's kind of how you'll know which bucket that they're in, the girlfriend one, the hookup one, whatever. So naturally, of course, I asked him what his checklist included of, uh, consisted of. But he is a very simple guy. And I'll tell you what was on his checklist, but just know that it's nothing like the kind of checklist that we write as women. We're very detailed. We're very descriptive. We know exactly what we want from top to bottom. We have like 50 things on our checklist and his is pretty short, sweet, straight to the point. It is quite simple, but it could be helpful. So I guess I'll share it. Number one, he instantly said showing respect. And I think a lot of men really need that, like those signs of respect from a woman in order to feel like a man so I kind of knew that that was going to be on there because 
I feel like every guy I've ever known is so big on respect. They all just want to be shown respect. They all give respect. And so that was very big for him. I probably could have asked him more specific ways to break that down. But I think you just know. Like Now, backing up to the whole checklist comment that he made with the bucket theory question. When he was saying, you have a checklist so you kind of know off the bat which bucket you would put someone in based on how they meet or match your checklist. You would know if someone is girlfriend potential, if say you had 10 things and they matched with like eight out of 10 things on there and so on and so forth. And so of course I I had to break this down, you know, I'm like, let's hear it. I want to hear what his checklist was basically. And let me make one thing clear. I was kind of expecting a checklist similar to the type of checklist that I have made but you quickly learn that men are very simple creatures and they do not have checklists the way that girls do I mean we've all had probably 50 things on our lists you know we're very detailed and we're very descriptive and we're very sure of every single thing that we want and men are a little bit more straight to the point on just like the basics And it is quite funny because his checklist was very short. But what I will also say is that he was basically describing me in his checklist. Every single time he kept going, I was like, oh, me, 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 me. Like, girl, now it makes perfect sense because I just feel like I was his whole damn checklist. So let's put it out there what it was. This is what he thinks a lot of men will have on their checklist. Not speaking for all, but he thinks, you know, a lot of men tend to think the same and look for similar things. So this was what came to him as what could generally be like agreed upon, you know, amongst most men. So off the bat, he said showing respect. And I mean, I could have guessed that from a mile away. I think men are very big on feeling respected And it could be down to the most simple things like the way you treat someone, the way you talk to someone, you know, do you talk down to them? Do you talk at them or do you talk with them? Like, do you show them true signs of respect? So of course, that's a big one. Next was a sense of humor. And you can just like laugh together a lot. And I think that that's so important because I remember, oh my God, I I was saying it last night, like our first date, I feel like we laughed the whole time. And what I really think, you know how they say like laughter is the best medicine. Like there's so many sciences and facts behind laughter. But I really think of laughter as a form of intimacy. I feel like those moments where you're just alone with someone and it's just you two and something makes you both laugh so hard that like other people wouldn't get it. Or like you just, you had to be there and no one else was there. So now it's just something between you two. Like that creates a closeness. I think that that's really a huge part of intimacy. It's just those moments that you have when it's just you two alone. And you're just bonding and you're becoming even closer. So I really do think that that sense of humor, you know, makes perfect sense that it it is important on that checklist. And then he went on to say good personality, talkative, which again, like I said might as well just say me I was your checklist um family oriented and I think that could range based on the type of upbringing that someone has but yeah family oriented was you know a big one up there and then oh my goodness clean cleanliness that's his biggest thing he went on and on about how important it is to be clean so girls be clean (laughs) Um, and then the last one was just like matches their lifestyle. So I think guys really are looking for someone to fit their lifestyle. And I think that also goes back to the whole like upbringing. Like I just mentioned with like the family, family oriented vibe, like, you know, some people are very different. Some people are completely independent or maybe they don't live anywhere near their family. They move around, they have a different type of lifestyle and you know, that's perfectly fine and normal, but I think men generally look for someone to match their lifestyle, whatever that lifestyle may be. And then on the contrary, a couple of girls asked, what are some things a girl can do that's a turnoff? 
And he said what I mentioned before about the reoccurring answer. He said someone who's stuck up or full of themselves or thinks that their shit doesn't stink. So whichever way you want to package it up with a pretty little bow, that's something that he found to be a turnoff. Now, I don't think many of you listeners are that type of person. So I don't really think that you'll be able to relate to that. But like I said, somebody must have traumatized him because he he said that twice. So um, just be mindful of that. You know, don't be so cocky, I guess. He also said someone who's really loud and obnoxious, which I, I think comes with maturity. I can think back to being younger and being around people all the time who I always felt were really loud and obnoxious. But as as you get older, I just don't really feel like people are that way. And I, I also just think that as you become more older and more mature, you just become more classy. And then also within that kind of category of turnoffs, that like immaturity category was also just someone who's really sloppy, someone who's drinking and partying all the time. And it's also important to note that like we are older, so maybe it's different if you guys are in college, you're probably both drinking all the time and going out and partying all the time. But this is more for like the late 20s, you know, early 30s kind of vibe, even late 30s where it's not really the best sign if someone is still in that kind of phase. And then of course, his last turn off was the opposite of what his biggest checklist thing was. He said a big turn off is someone who's not clean. <laughs> Again, I think somebody traumatized him, but he said like he want like okay, so guys, if they're meeting you, dating you, getting to know you, maybe coming to your place and they want to be able to see what their future will be like with you. Like imagine living together imagine being in a serious committed relationship so if you're someone who's a big mess your place is a pigsty your place isn't clean maybe it smells maybe shit's all over the place or in general if you're just like not a clean person he's like that's a big deal breaker for you know guys like that who they don't if if, especially if they're going to live with someone they don't want to live in that sort of vibe and I, I think that's part of the reason why me personally, I've just never even had roommates as an adult because I'm such a clean person that everything is put away all the time. And in college, you know, I've had roommates and people who just don't, they don't think about that. They don't care about that. They'll leave their shit out all over the place. They'll leave the bed a mess and whatnot. And that used to, oh, that was like my biggest problem. I feel like that was always the biggest issue I had with roommates was them leaving the room a mess. And so, yeah, I, as soon as I could live on my own and not worry about roommates and having other people shit in the way, I took that opportunity. (laughs) And then we have two more questions that I selected. So one girl was asking about talking about work. She said, I feel like I have nothing to talk about on dates other than my work. Like I don't really have hobbies. I don't really do much else. So I don't really have anything else to share so I asked him you know like what did I do did I talk a lot about work or do you did you care to ask me about my work like what what was that vibe like what what are your opinions around that so he said no he said honestly I really didn't ask you too much about work other than just like what do you do like we didn't really like talk about that much further and he said you didn't bring it up he's like you you just didn't volunteer further information about work like if it if it wasn't part of the conversation like it just didn't get talked about we just had more personal conversation like the family stuff so he said he said probably not you know men like to know about you as a person not what you do for work because your work isn't necessarily your life you are not your work it's just what you do for work you know so the, the conversations were more about like seeing if I'm close with my family, what are my hobbies or things that I just enjoy, what do I like, even what kind of music do I like, just anything. And of course, of course, he wanted to know like if I like to cook and things of that sort, which luckily for him, I do. So for him, he thinks most guys, at least the guys he knows, are much more into getting to just know you like the personal side of you, the emotional side of you, the wholesome side of you. But of course, as he mentioned again, like every guy is different. And there could be some guys who are specifically really focused on work and that's what they want to know in a woman. Like, 
what like your career goals they really want to know how driven you are and maybe that's all they ask about like tell me more about your job tell me more about you know your your work life and everyone has a different kind of lifestyle so I really think it comes down to which kind of guy you go out with because going back to that compatibility thing and that matching to their lifestyle kind of thing that we've already addressed before he said some guys don't really care about certain things like a home-cooked meal they could be the type of guy who wouldn't care to like order takeout every night or maybe they personally like to cook so they don't really care if a woman likes to cook because they'd rather do it themselves like it's all about the dynamic and I'm just using the cooking example because that's what I just mentioned but that could go with anything even like hobbies you know some guys are really big on sports and sports could be something that's like their hobby so maybe they want a girl who's really big into sports or even just a hobby that they could relate to you know some guys might want a girl who's super athletic I can think of a few of my girlfriends who are really athletic with their boyfriends like they'll play sports together or or they're big on like going hiking together and things of that sort. Personally, that's just not my vibe, but there are definitely guys who look for that specifically in a partner because they want someone like that. Or the couples who are really big on traveling. Obviously, I'm not against traveling. I, I do love to travel, but I don't have that like wanderlust personality where I need to always be going on an adventure or I need to always be down to just pack up and go away whereas other guys could be like that's what I'm looking for my travel buddy my travel companion and that's what they want to know about so they want to hear about your travel your adventure and those sort of passions so I think what it comes down to is that a, a really masculine man like someone who's just looking for that traditional relationship dynamic they personally are not going to be big on knowing about your career and really digging into that doesn't mean that they won't ask at all but it just that won't really be the forefront of your conversations whereas other guys who have different priorities and different interests that's going to be the priority of their conversation whatever the main interest is that they're looking for And the last question that was asked many times in all different ways, how quickly does a guy know if she's the one he wants to be with? How many dates in until a guy is sure you're the one? All different ways that girls are like, all right, how fast does a guy know? Tell us straight up, how long does it take? And he said as simple as this, by the second or third date, bam. That was it. So those are all of the questions that I asked him. I hope that it was helpful. I know that it's very specific to his own opinion and what he was looking for when he was single and dating. But I still think that a lot of men do tend to think alike. Same way that I think a lot of women tend to think alike. A lot of us look for similar things as a lot of men look for similar things. So if if even one certain thing really clicked with you or resonated with you or made you say, you know what, I should do more of this or less of that or not focus so much on this or focus a little bit more on that, then great. I'm glad that even a little tiny portion of this could help you. It's just to give you a little insight about the male brain. But like I said, it's coming from someone who's very, he's a very simple man. He doesn't give thorough and thought out deep answers the way that a girl would if, if if a guy asked me these questions oh I would have a field day I could go on and on and on all day so I appreciate him for helping me out and doing this with me but that's all we got for today so thank you girls so much for listening until next time girls If you love For The Girls podcast, then you'd love working with me directly even more. I'm a confidence coach with a super fun membership, The Confidence Club, where you get daily coaching with me personally via group chat, and I host a live group call every month. If you want high value coaching at a low ticket price, this is for you. The Confidence Club is for the girls who want to grow at their own pace, take the pressure off of a private setting and weekly call commitments, learn alongside a supportive community of like-minded besties, and gain an unlimited amount of insight and mentorship at an affordable rate. 
No matter how busy your schedule is with work, school, or kids, this program is a game changer and was designed with you in mind. And for those of you who want to accelerate your personal development journey with private coaching, I offer three or six month one-on-one coaching programs for the girls who are ready to go all in. For all the details on coaching with me, head to victoriaalario.com or click the link in the show notes.